Moving on to the next rate of change example, the temperature T in degrees Celsius of a coffee X minutes after boil is modeled by T equals 100 over X plus 2 plus 25. How fast is the temperature changing at 35 degrees Celsius? Now, just from looking at the question, you can tell it's a rate of change question because they're asking how fast is the temperature changing at 35 degrees Celsius? And it's instantaneous rate of change because it's at a specific point in time when the coffee reaches 35 degrees Celsius. So the first step is we have to figure out when does the temperature equal 35 degrees Celsius for the coffee. So we have to find after how many minutes after the boil does it hit 35 degrees Celsius and the way we would do that is we would make the T equal to 35 and then solve for X. So we'd have 100 over X plus 2 plus 25. Now we bring the 25 over 35 minus 25 that would just give us 10. So this is all over x plus 2. Now we could cross multiply so we'd have 10 bracket x plus 2 equals 100. Let's divide both sides by 10 to get rid of this 10 here so we'd have x plus 2 equals 10 so x is equal to 8. So 8 minutes after boil the temperature of the coffee reaches 35 degrees Celsius. And now since we know the time at which it hits 35 degrees Celsius, we could find the instantaneous rate of change at that specific point in time when x is equal to 8. And to do that, we would use the difference quotient, the limit as h goes to 0, of t of 8 plus h minus t of 8 all over h, where this uh, capital T here represents this function that we were given. So then further simplifying the difference quotient, t of 8 plus h, we would plug in just 8 plus h for this x value. So we'd be left with 100 over 8 plus h plus 2 plus 25, and then we're subtracting 35, which is equal to t8. Basically, we were given that. Add an x value of 8, t is 35, and this is all over h. And then further simplifying this a plus h plus 2, we can add the 8 and the 2, so we'd be left with 10 plus h in that denominator. And then 25 minus 35 gives us negative 10, and this is still all over h. Now, to simplify this even further, remember we have to get rid of this h in the denominator. And because we're dealing with a reciprocal function, what we want to do is we want to take both of these terms and make them into one fraction. So then continuing this up here, we would combine these two expressions into one fraction. So basically we multiplied this fraction 10 over 1 by 10 plus h. We multiplied the denominator by that. And since we multiplied the denominator by that, we have to also multiply the numerator by that. And we're dividing this whole expression still by h, but instead of dividing it by h, let's just multiply it by 1 over h. Because what's going to happen is we're going to get a term remaining in the numerator that's just in terms of h, and then the h's will cancel out smoothly. And you can see it a lot easier this way versus if we're dividing. And the reason why we can be multiplying by 1 over h if you remember, we're just dividing another fraction. So when we divide by a fraction h over 1, that's the same as multiplying it by its reciprocal. And then further simplifying that numerator, we would have negative 10h over 10 plus h and multiplying it by 1 over h. So these h's cancel out. And now we can plug in 0 for h. So this h would go to 0 and we'd be left with negative 10 over 10. So the answer is negative 1. So the temperature is changing at negative 1 degrees Celsius per the uh, independent variable is in minutes. So it's per minute. So that is our answer. Negative 1 degrees Celsius per minute. That's how fast the temperature is changing when the coffee reaches 35 degrees Celsius or 8 minutes after the boil. Now if you notice when we found the rate of change we found it by picking a specific a value of 8 because that's when we had to find the instantaneous rate of change for. 
However, another way you could have done it is you could have found just a general formula for the rate of change by picking a general value a here. So t of a plus h minus t of a all over h and then getting a general formula and then plugging in that value of 8 in for A and then you would still get negative 1 degrees uh, Celsius per minute. So my suggestion actually is, is to actually try it, try the algebra, I'm not going to do it in this video, get a general formula and then when you plug in that value of 8 you should get negative 1. And actually, if you want a reference to see if you would do this general formula right, the general formula that you should get at the end is this negative 100 over a plus 2 squared. So that is your answer for the general formula if you do it this way. If you don't get that, then you know you did something wrong. And I would go back to videos when we dealt with uh, reciprocal functions when we found the general slope formula. And the way that I was able to get this so fast, you might be asking yourself, is because I found the derivative of this. And derivatives we're going to be covering in the next unit. And there are specific rules where we actually don't have to go through this, we can just do shortcuts. So, but we'll get there. But uh, yeah, go through the algebra for this and make sure you get this negative 100 over a plus 2 squared. And then when you plug in 8 for a, you would get negative 1. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.